So you've built an Airtable database and now you need a way to connect it to a third party software via an API. However, you run into the situation where that tool does not have a native Airtable connection, nor does it have an integration with Zapier or Make to send that data to your Airtable database. This is a problem that every Airtable builder is going to run into at some point, most likely, if they're trying to integrate their Airtable database with external softwares or tools. I had a friend that came to me with a situation like this just a couple of weeks ago, and he's in a position where he had built an Airtable database and he wanted a way to pull images for each of the game titles in his database from an external review site and upload those images to those game titles uh, via an API. This was a situation where there was no built-in Airtable integration for that tool, nor was there a Zapier or Make integration that he could leverage. So he had two options. One, he could write the code himself in Airtable as a script to connect to that API and pull that data back into his Airtable database. This is actually the approach he started off with. And that's because he wanted to build his programming experience and have that skill in his, in his bag. So that allows you to call the APIs via code. Uh, however, there's a second option uh, that is a lot more efficient when it comes to building more complex automations. And that is using a make scenario to call the API on your behalf using a visual programming interface. What this does is it helps you build integrations and automations much faster. It also helps you build more reliable automations and helps you debug them in a more efficient and a repeatable and a traceable manner. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the exact steps that I took to connect my Airtable database to third-party APIs in less than 20 lines of code. So let's jump into it. So we have a CRM here, which has a table of contacts. And our objective is going to be to take each of these records um, in this contacts table and validate the phone number using an external uh, API called Abstract API. So the first thing we needed to do is add a field to track the phone number validation status. This is a single select with the two options being valid and invalid. And then the two views we created to track our process are first the unvalidated contact view. This is gonna have two filters on it, one to only show records that have a phone number, and then another one to only show records that have an empty phone number validation status. The next view is gonna be the validated contacts view. This is going to show us all of the contacts that also have a phone number, but have a phone number validation status that is either valid or invalid. These are going to be the contacts that have already gone through the process of being validated. So the next step is to go to our automation and set up a connection between our Airtable database and our make scenario. So in our automations pane, you can see that we already created an automation here for us to work off of. This automation is triggered when a record enters the unvalidated contacts view and it uh, runs a script that is going to take in two variables, one, the phone number of our contact, and then two, the record ID of that contact record. We use this record ID to update the contact record um, from the make scenario without having to um, be in Airtable itself to update the record. You can look into the code here. As you can see, it's only 16 lines, so it's super simple. Um, the first is line of code is gonna pull in the configuration variables from the left-hand pane. The next few lines are going to be the uh, run function that we are setting up to call the fetch function. That is going to be what actually triggers our webhook or, or hits our webhook and sends the information in the body, which is the phone number and the contact record ID, to the make scenario. We also set our headers and the method type. Um, webhooks are going to be post method so that you are sending data and posting data to the server. The last line just calls the function and that's it for our script. So we'll jump over to our make scenario, and you will see that uh, we have four modules here, which we'll go through um, in detail. So the first one is going to be our webhook module. Um, you're going to go down to your bottom right-hand menu to add all these modules. Uh, we already have them here, but the four are going to be the webhooks module, HTTP module, JSON module, and the Airtable module. As we said, first we have our webhook. Um, to add a webhook, we just click Add give it the name, so save that, and then you'll copy the webhook address to your um, clipboard, and then you're gonna go back to your automation and update the link that is within the uh, fetch function to that webhook URL. All right, so once you've done that, you're gonna to want to determine the data structure. So we click, we determine data structure, and then we are gonna trigger our automation up here so that it sends the data from our test record in Airtable to the, um, make webhook. As you can see, it successfully determined the structure. 
we'll click OK. And then you'll see we can now reference variables from that uh, webhook in the subsequent modules. So to set up our HTTP module, we then need to pull in some information from our API. So in abstract API, we're going to pull a few different things. First, we're going to pull the URL of the, the API that we're trying to call from this scenario. We'll set the method, which in our case is going to be get because uh, that's just the specification for this particular API's endpoint. And then we'll set two query parameters. Um, one will be the API key and the second will be the phone number from the make scenario that we uh, want to actually validate. In abstract API, that information is super easy to find. Here we'll grab the API endpoint URL. We'll paste it here. All this is going to be in here already since we've already set it up. We'll pull in the API key and we'll paste that there. And as you can see, we have the phone number here from the webhook, so we won't change that. So then we're going to save this and that's what's going to give us what we need to actually call our API and validate our phone numbers. So we'll go ahead and test this out by unlinking it from the rest of the process. We'll click run once and then we'll go back to our Airtable automation, click test again. It's going to trigger that webhook, call the API, and we'll see that it sent out a bundle with a status code of 200. That means it was successful um, in hitting the API and it sent us back this uh, data. This is going to be a string that represents a JSON object um, that actually gives us the output of that function. So we can copy this, and the reason why we're going to copy this is because we, we can't use that information as a string yet inside of the subsequent modules. We need to turn it into a JSON object using the parse JSON module. So what you're going to do is open the JSON module, we'll click add, we'll give your data structure a name, and then hit this generate button, and we'll paste in that data that we pulled from that sample API call. Once you click generate, it's going to actually pull in all of the structure of that um, JSON object for you. You'll click save. And what that's going to allow you to do is um, enter your JSON string from the previous module. And then in the next module, we'll actually be able to pull the specific attributes from that response um, into our record. We want to be able to put the validation status back in our Airtable record. And so that's what we um, want to parse. The last step is going to be to actually update that contact record in Airtable with the validation status. So the record ID is going to be the same record ID from the original webhook call. And then we are going to map our phone number validation status using an if statement. So here's a very simple logic. We're going to take the valid um, key of our JSON object that we just parsed. Um, it's got, that's going to be a Boolean. So if that equals to true, we are going to set the phone number validation status as valid. If it is not true, uh, we will set it as invalid. We'll save that and now our scenario is now ready to call. So to test this from beginning to end, we'll click run once again. We'll go back to our test Airtable record and then you'll see that it went ahead and ran and updated the Airtable record um, for that test, test, um, test contact. So we'll go back to our database. We'll go to our validated contacts view and we'll be able to see that that phone number did get validated. It was invalid because all of this is pretty much test data, but um, you can see the process, how it works and how um, we get from beginning to end. So our last step is going to be to turn these automations on and then validate the rest of the contacts in the database. So we turn on our Airtable automation. We're gonna turn on our uh, make automation. And then we are going to go back to our table of contacts, and we are going to put in a dummy filter to clear out all of these uh, records. Again, this automation is triggered when any record enters this unvalidated contacts view. So we are going to remove the filter, send all these contacts back into this view, which is going to trigger the automation. So um, in a second, you'll see this number is going to start to drop, meaning our automation is running and clearing out these records. If we go back to our validated contacts view, You'll also see that you know those are popping in here with their validation status and that is all we have to do to connect our Airtable database to a third-party software with less than 20 lines of code so what this allows us to do again is to build more robust automations less code less room for human error and more traceability so that we can build um, better automations for our clients so we are going to be posting the code at the bottom of this video as a free surprise so please take that use that and I hope that uh, helps you build a little bit faster all right, thanks and hope to see you in the next video.